I love it right now. <laughs> Every night a game. It's exciting stuff. Great game tonight, Fiesta Bowl. Johnny yeah. football tomorrow night. It's, it's coming. Uh, Oregon and, and uh, Kansas State tonight. Cotton Bowl tomorrow night in Dallas. And that's when you're going to see uh, Johnny football now. The uh, crowned Heisman Trophy winner and the Texas Aggies going against Oklahoma. And so with us right now on the APEC VIP hotline, cutting edge training for the serious athlete, apecgo.com. Joining us from Gigum 24-7, part of the uh, 24-7 Sports Network online, Aubrey Bloom covering the Aggies. How you doing, Aubrey? Pretty good. How y'all doing today? Doing very well, sir. How are you? Well, like I said, it's a little cold here in Dallas, but it's not too bad. It's a, it's a little chilly here, too. A little damp and wet, but uh, the good news is playing inside tomorrow, so that's going to be good. So tell me a little bit about the uh, the atmosphere around the Cotton Bowl now. How long have you been there, first of all? Uh, I've been here all week. Yeah, okay. I think you're really starting to see it uh, ramp up here the last few days. I think people have started to realize uh, just how big this game is, especially to A&M fans. So it's... Uh, you know, ramping up a little bit. There's definitely a little a little buzz around this game that you don't always see for uh, non-BCS games. It's a different kind of a feel for a bowl game because Oklahoma is a team that Texas A&M knows well from their days playing in the Big 12. It's not like, uh, you know, two conferences that don't see each other or two teams that haven't seen each other in a while, right? <laughs> yeah, certainly. I mean, they've played every year since 1996. The Kevin Sumlin used to work on Bob Stoops' staff at Oklahoma, so there's a, a lot of ties between the two teams, and they, and they definitely know each other very well. Well, I was going to ask, who does that give the edge to when you start talking about guys that know each other really well like Stoops and Sumlin do, uh, having coached uh, together, uh, coached on the same staff, knowing each other's you know plays, basically? is you know I'm sure it's like dealing with a mirror image of yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, I would think the advantage would probably go to someone because of how much his offense has changed uh, and what they ran at Houston versus what they did at Oklahoma, and also the fact that Oklahoma's players haven't played against an A&M team playing under Kevin Sumlin as opposed to A&M's, which, which has played Bob Stoops' Oklahoma team. You mentioned the change in the offense from uh, when Kevin Sumlin was at Oklahoma to Texas A&M. What is the difference in the offenses, really? Well, it's a little more, back then it was kind of a single back, uh, really rushing offense. You had all those guys in a row, the Adrian Peterson, uh, Moses and Madhu, uh, DeMarco Murrays, all those guys. It was really a run-based, you know, single back offense, as opposed to A&M's now, which is more of an air raid type offense is what they call it, even though they did lead the SEC in rushing. But it's a little more of a spread rushing attack as opposed to a downhill rushing attack. So, I mean, it's a minor difference, but it is a little bit different. Everybody I've talked to has said the same thing. They're wondering what kind of a frame of mind uh, Johnny Manziel is going to be in now after going through all the uh, the hype and the Heisman Trophy and making all the television appearances and showing up at all the big uh, sporting events. And you know, Is he going to be ready for this football game? Uh, have you heard the same things? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, of course you're going to hear that. I, I, th- I like the way that he put it the other day, though, that – he used to do all those things anyway, but no one ever noticed before. <laughs> so he, uh, you know, he's, he's a different kind of kid. He's, he's not someone who always has their head in the playbook. You know, he's a work hard, play hard kind of guy. So he gets it done in practice, and then when he's not, you know, on the clock, he's out, you know, doing, having a little fun. So Joe Namath is what you're saying. <laughs> Maybe not quite that level yet, but, uh, but somewhere like that. Playing hard. He's Kenny Stabler. Oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, as far as uh, Sumlin is concerned, I was looking at an article today, and, I, and you were talking about this. Uh, talk about the difference this guy has made in this Texas A&M program this year. I, for all the, the, the good that Johnny Manziel has done and the difference he's made in this football team, it starts with Sumlin and, and the way he's energized his program. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing was he came in with a, a culture of, of competitiveness. You know, it wasn't just about, you know, every, everything every day is about winning. It's not just the games that it's about winning and losing. Every day in the offices and the meetings and the practices and drills, it's always about winning. And I think that's the biggest difference, you know, from this staff to the old staff. Sean Porter the other day when I interviewed him, you know, he said that all coaches say that all the matters is winning, but for someone, he really lives it. He said it was a, you know, that was the biggest change from the last coaching staff. Tell me uh, a number of reasons why A&M is going to win this game tomorrow night. 
Well, I think the biggest reason is Johnny Manziel, obviously. When you have the nation's most dynamic player, it's going to give you a bit of an advantage. But the other thing is that Oklahoma's defense has really struggled lately with spread teams. You know, they gave up a lot of points to West Virginia, Oklahoma State, and Baylor, which are three teams that essentially run the same offense as A&M. So, uh, you know, just not probably not quite as good as A&M is. So I think that's a, a big key. And then also, you never know which Landry Jones is going to show up. So he's kind of a, an inconsistent player, and if he's not on, you know, then the A&M's got a pretty big advantage. And the, the, the other side of that, though, is that Landry Jones is a 3-0 and in bowl games right now, so he seems to show up in the right kind of games. Yeah, that is true. Like I said, if you want to go the other way, he's also a reason why A&M could lose this game, because when he, when he is on, he's really on. Well, and let's say he's on tomorrow night. Is the A&M defense up to being able to slow that passing game down and shut him down? Uh, quite frankly, I don't think so, unless they can get uh, a lot of, you know, in- influence by the pass rush is going to be a-, a huge key. But if if he's able to get the ball off and the pass rush isn't a factor, then quite frankly, no, I don't think A&M can slow him down. I don't think their secondary is good enough to match up with Oklahoma's receivers for, for that long of a game. Okay, so the bottom line is uh, they've got to find a way to disrupt Landry Jones, and I guess that means DeMontre Moore's got to have a big game, right? <laughs> yeah, he does. I think he's going to be... Uh, as far as defensive players go, I mean, maybe overall, he might be the most important player for A&M in tomorrow's game. Talk about the ways that they will try to use him tomorrow night to, uh, to get to Landry Jones. Yeah, you know, normally he plays off the edge in the 4-3, but A&M's going to be running a lot of nickel. And in their nickel package, a lot of times they're in a 3-3-5, and also they run some different kind of looks. So you'll see, uh, you'll see him move around a little bit. I don't think he's necessarily just going to be rushing off the weak side. I think you'll see him from a couple different locations tomorrow, kind of like they did late in Alabama where he was playing kind of a – hybrid linebacker position. I, w- I would look for that a little bit tomorrow. The other question, and we talked about this with uh, several people today, talking about uh, teams getting used to playing in bowl games, and I think this is what, the second bowl game, third, maybe third bowl game that, that Kevin Sumlin has coached in as opposed to the number of bowl games that Bob Stoops has coached in, and there's a, there's a certain, uh, you have to have a certain knack for being able to know how to get a team ready for a bowl game. Does that give Stoops the edge? I think certainly that would give that would give Oklahoma an edge. You know, A and M not only not only has someone not been in that many bowl games, but this A and M team really hasn't played in a big bowl game. The, the uh, Cotton Bowl in 2010, but a lot of these guys were pretty young for that game, and they got killed anyway. So I'm not sure how much that's going to help them. So I mean, definitely, I think bowl game experience is a, a heavy favor in Oklahoma. So have you? What Summerlin said about trying to to get a team ready? How, how has he figured out how to make sure that they? got up but not too up and you know all the pacing that you've got to do when you're getting a team ready for uh, a bowl game after a long layoff well one thing he's talked about is not getting the game plan in too early he thinks players can get bored so a&m really didn't start focusing on oklahoma at least from the players standpoint until this week uh putting in like they would normally do for a game week they waited until this week to start doing their their game installation so that's a little bit different from probably most teams and I think that's going to be a big key if he's the one guy to get bored during the bowl preparation. So we'll see if it works out. Like you said, he doesn't have much experience, so it's kind of going to be a trial by error, I guess. I, I know this is going to sound crazy based on the histories of these two programs, but which team's going to have the most pressure on him going into tomorrow night? Yeah, I think it's A&M. I don't, I don't think a loss to A&M by Oklahoma really, really hurts them at all, but a loss by A&M would really – kill some of the momentum they've built up you know not that it would absolutely destroy it or anything or that it's a bad season but to end their season with the win over Oklahoma would be A&M's fourth 11 win season of all time and include a win over a team that quite frankly they've been dominated by for the last 15 years so I think certainly A&M has the most pressure on them in this game. So you think that would absolutely take some of the air out of this thing if if they did lose? I think a little bit you know it's certainly you know they're the only SEC team that plays a big 12 team which is big in itself, despite the fact that they were in the Big 12. You know, even some of the players have talked about the fact that they don't like the fact that their last Big 12 game they lost uh, to Texas last year. So, you know, it's something that the, the players know about. It's something that they're thinking about. So I think it's, you know, certainly a major factor. Now, as far as Johnny Manziel's concerned now, I mean, from this point forward until he leaves A&M, he's going to wear a big target on his back. Uh, what do you think about his ability to handle that? You know, I think it's a problem for him. You know, one thing that people haven't gotten to really know him yet because of the, the way he is with the media is one thing, but he's always thought he's the best player ever. So from that from that <laughs> standpoint, I don't, I don't think it really bothers him much. What kind of health situation are these guys in? Both teams healthy? 
Uh, a and is. I don't think A&M's going to have any major injury issues. Uh, I don't know about Oklahoma. Um, I know for, I think A&M's had one guy who kind of tweaked the hamstring, but other than that, I think they should be fine. They're as healthy as they've been all season, for sure. This game's got some high stakes as far as recruiting is concerned, too, right? Uh, a little bit. Certainly for a momentum perspective, especially for A&M. You know, I don't think there's a whole lot of guys left out there that are trying to decide between the two schools. As a matter of fact, A&M's probably almost done recruiting for this cycle, but they uh, certainly for momentum purposes, especially for, you know, kind of to validate A&M's, you know, SEC move and to come back and be the Big 12 team, I think that definitely would help them out. Have you heard a lot during the news conferences about Oklahoma having to answer questions about underachieving this year? Uh, you know, I really haven't. I think, the, you know, it's hard to say you're underachieving. The only losses were to, to Kansas State, who's in a BCS game tonight, and, of course, Notre Dame next week. So, you know, I don't think that's been a major issue. You know, from listening to their coaches and their players talk, it does seem like they genuinely want to be in this game, which is always a major concern in bowl games. So I think from that, and I don't think that's going to be a major deal. Are the Aggies happy with being in the Cotton Bowl? Uh, certainly. I think there was a, maybe an initial thought of, oh, man, maybe we wanted to go to Florida or get to a new bowl game right that's never been. But the more and more people look at this game, the more and more they realize how big of a game this is. You know, like we said, you could argue this is the maybe the biggest game on the slate outside the national championship game. So it's uh, it's going to be an interesting one. I think they uh, A&M is definitely fired up to play, especially because it's the Big 12 team. Okay, you also have to deal with another issue, and that's Cliff Kingsbury no longer on the staff, uh, now working with Texas Tech. Uh, how much of a difference is that going to make? Uh, a pretty big one, I think, actually. Uh, you know, Oklahoma's defense has really struggled with spread rushing teams. That's something they've really had a hard time with late in the season. And the coach that's going to be calling the plays for A&M in this game has been their running backs coach all season. So I think as opposed to Kingsbury, when things got tight, Kingsbury would always err on the side of the passing offense. I think McKinney's probably going to err on the rushing side of things. So I think you might see a little more dedication in the ground game than you would normally see out of A&M tomorrow. So it actually may be a help instead of a hindrance? <laughs> it could be. It could be. You know, against LSU, a and was running the ball fairly well, and it kind of got away from them, and they stopped running it. I don't think that's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, so give me a sense of how the Aggies and the Aggie uh, Nation feels uh, about their chances tomorrow night. Are they, are they nervous? Are they confident? What, what do you think is the, the overall feeling about this game tomorrow night? Well, I think on the surface, everyone's going to be confident. You know, every A&M fan's going to think, well, if we can beat Alabama, certainly we can beat Oklahoma. But under the surface, there is that nervousness because, like I said, you know, A&M has been just absolutely dominated by Oklahoma since Bob Stoops got there. They've only beaten a Bob Stoops team twice. So I think that's certainly under the surface of everybody is, uh, you know, if it was anybody but Oklahoma, I think there'd be a lot more confidence, but it is Oklahoma. Okay, so they're not going in overconfident then, that's for sure. (laughs) Certainly not. Okay, Aubrey, thank you very much for coming on with us. What what, what can we look for in the uh, next few days on uh, Gig'em 24-7? Well, we have full game coverage. We have some two stories up today. We'll have two more stories up tomorrow and a couple different things about the game. And then also uh, 24-7 Sports has coverage at all of the big uh, uh, recruiting games this weekend, the Under Armour game, the Army All-American game, the OD Bowl, all those different types of things. So if recruiting is your thing, there's a lot going on. If the football team itself is your thing, there's a lot going on. So it's going to be a pretty busy weekend for us. Outstanding. We love it. Thanks very much for coming on with us, Aubrey. Nice. Anytime. All right. Aubrey Bloom from Gig'em 24-7. Uh, on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM covering the uh, Texas Aggies.